channel has been on a short summer break, but we didn't forget the mobile world completely. During the break, we even visited one of the few places where you can legally get right next to an active 5G base station. Now we're back with fresh energy and ready to continue testing. Today, we're unboxing one of the most anticipated outdoor 5G routers of the year, the Microtic ATL 5G R60. With its futuristic design and massive built-in high-gain antenna, it looks more like a piece of infrastructure than a consumer device. But looks aren't everything. Can it really stand up against proven models like the ZTE MC889 A Pro? In this video, we'll dig into the specs and walk through the powerful router OS interface. Along the way, we'll also point out a few configuration pitfalls you definitely want to avoid. And of course, we'll push the router to its limits with speed tests to see if this bulky powerhouse really deserves a spot on your roof. Let's dive in. Inside the ATL 5GR16, you'll find a dual core ARM chipset running at 800 megahertz with 512 megabytes of memory. The modem itself is based on Qualcomm's X65 generation, not the absolute newest anymore, but a very reliable and well-proven 5G release 16 platform with excellent band coverage. On the outside, the highlight is the massive 16 dBi high gain directional antenna with full 4x4 MIMO. Connectivity is limited to a single gigabit ethernet port with PoE in, but in exchange you get dual SIM support, including a built-in eSIM capability, giving extra flexibility for remote deployments. On paper, the Microtic ATL 5G R16 and the ZTE MC889A Pro look surprisingly close. Both are built around Qualcomm's X65 modem generation, giving them similar 5G capabilities and band support. Where Macrotic stands out is the massive 16 dBi directional antenna, compared to roughly 11 dBi on the ZTE. But in every other major aspect, these two devices are positioned at a very equal level when it comes to specifications. Let's start the unboxing of the Microtik ATL 5GR60. The packaging itself is very much in Microtik style. Plain, practical, no extra flash, but sturdy enough to protect the hardware during transport. The first thing we see inside is the quick start documentation. Microtik assumes their users know what they're doing, so don't expect a long manual here, just the essentials to get online. Next, we come across something a bit unexpected, a small pack of gummy bears. A reminder that installations can sometimes be long, so keeping your sugar levels up might not be the worst idea. Now, let's lift out the main unit itself. The first impression is the size. This router is big. At more than 30 centimeters across, it feels closer to a small satellite dish than a typical CPE, with the enclosure built to withstand harsh weather conditions. The angled aerodynamic shape also prevents snow or water from collecting on the surface, making it ideal for northern climates. When we turn the unit around to look at the bottom, you'll find the single RJ45 connector. This single port handles both power and data using PoE, which keeps installation simple with just one cable. And just beside them is the SIM card slot. Unlike most modern rotors that use nano-SIM, Microtic has chosen a micro-SIM format. That means you'll either need a proper adapter or the frame from a full SIM card set to fit it correctly. Further in the box, we find the included power supply and a gigabit PoE injector. The injector combines data and power into a single cable, which is the most common way to run the unit. As mentioned, connectivity is limited to gigabit speeds. No 2.5 gigabit port, but for rural long-range setups, that's often plenty. Finally, 
At the bottom are two solid metal mounting brackets. These are designed for pole mounting only. There isn't a dedicated wall bracket included, so mounting to a mast or pole is mandatory. Let's take a closer look at the Microtic ATL5G R16 admin interface. Like all Microtic devices, it runs router OS, which means this isn't your typical plug and play web UI. It's a professional toolkit with deep control over every layer of networking. After logging in, we start from the list of interfaces. Here we can see the LTE1 modem, and this is where the real depth begins. The LTE1 page provides detailed signal values and cell ID information. There's also a cell monitoring view, which is extremely useful for troubleshooting or optimizing antenna direction. From here, you even have the possibility to directly upgrade the Quectal modem firmware inside the unit, something most consumer routers simply don't allow. Next, we open the built-in terminal. This is where router OS really shows its power. Using terminal commands, the router supports cell locking across multiple frequency bands at the same time, a feature that many other 5G routers simply don't offer. For advanced users, this gives precise control over which bands and cells the modem connects to, allowing you to tune performance in ways that a normal web UI cannot. At the same time, the terminal is not particularly beginner friendly. Moving on to security features, Router OS fully supports WireGuard, giving you a modern VPN solution out of the box. Under the IP tab, we can configure routing, create advanced firewall rules, and shape traffic queues. This is enterprise level flexibility in what looks like a simple outdoor CPE. The firewall section deserves special mention. Unlike most outdoor 5G routers that only allow very basic filtering, Router OS gives you granular rule creation with chains, NAT, mangle, and raw tables. It's powerful, but it also requires caution. A single mistake here can easily cut off your access to the router. Before moving to traffic queues, let's take a quick look at the system menu. Here you can access firmware updates, licensing information, scheduler options, and resource usage. From there, we continue with the queues, which allow detailed traffic shaping and prioritization. Combined with the firewall, this gives you full control over how bandwidth is allocated across devices or applications. Next, we open the logs. This section provides a real-time timeline of everything happening inside the router, from interface changes and DHCP leases, to system warnings and firewall activity. For troubleshooting, the logs are invaluable. You can immediately see when a modem drops connection, when a VPN tunnel comes online, or when firewall rules are being applied. You can also filter and export log data for deeper analysis, which makes it easier to identify patterns if problems keep repeating. And yet again, this level of log detail is something that's missing from most other 5G routers, making the Microtic stand out for power users and professionals. After logs, we move to the Tools menu, where you'll find nice package of diagnostics like bandwidth tests, ping, traceroute, and analyzers. Another advanced option is Dude, Microtic's dedicated network monitoring platform. With Dude, you can go far beyond this single rotor. It automatically discovers devices across your network, maps them visually, and monitors their status in real time. You can configure alerts, track, bandwidth usage, and even monitor multiple microtic devices simultaneously. For anyone managing larger setups or remote deployments, it transforms the router from a standalone unit into part of a much bigger monitoring system. To demonstrate just how deep the integration goes, we set up SNMP collection of the LTE1 signal values, including RSRP and RSRQ. This allows long-term monitoring of signal trends. In our case, we integrated the data directly into Home Assistant, making it possible to track how the connection behaves over days or even weeks. Microtik 
also provides Winbox, a standalone management software that works as a full alternative to the web browser interface. It's lightweight, responsive, and gives access to the same settings in a more streamlined way, which many long-time Microtic users prefer. By default, many system services are running, including Telnet. If you drop the firewall entirely, the device instantly starts receiving hostile connection attempts from the internet, with automated scanners knocking on everything from Telnet to other exposed services. It's a clear reminder that while Router OS is powerful, it's not forgiving if you misconfigure security. Here's the test setup. The distance to the nearest base station is around 1.5 kilometers, but there's a forested area between the router and the tower. For the signal analysis, we collected long-term measurements on the main LTE anchor bands, B1, B3, and B20 using SNMP. At this stage, 5G metrics aren't yet exposed through SNP, although Microtic has confirmed they may be added in the future. What stands out is how clean and stable the signal values remained over time. Both SINR and RSRQ held steady within ranges that indicate very low interference and consistent cell quality. In practice, that means the link isn't just strong in one moment, but reliable across hours and days of monitoring. Compared to the ZTE MC 889A Pro, the Microtic delivered a very similar level of stability. Moving on to the speed tests, the ATL 5GR16 delivered some impressive results. Using only four LTE bands in carrier aggregation, the router was already able to push speeds beyond 500 megabits per second, a very strong showing for LTE only operation. As we continued testing, it became clear that the Quectel modem inside is quite sensitive to the band configuration. Different combinations produced noticeably different speeds, which highlights the importance of careful band selection when optimizing performance. One interesting case was when adding N28 into the mix. Instead of boosting throughput, the overall speed actually dropped. This wasn't a limitation of the modem itself, but more an operator side issue, showing how network implementation can impact real world results. Overall, the speed performance was excellent. With the router demonstrating both strong raw throughput and plenty of potential when the band configuration is dialed in. Let's wrap things up with a quick summary of the Microtic ATL 5GR16. At the core, the Quectel X65 based modem may not be the newest on the market, but it's a proven and reliable performer that delivered excellent speeds in our tests. Combined with the built in high gain directional antenna, the router provides very stable signal quality, especially in rural and weak signal environments. One clear advantage is dual SIM support, including a built in eSIM that can be used with Microtics, own data plans, or switch to another operator profile. That gives the router extra flexibility for remote or backup connections. Where Microtic really stands apart is Router OS. The amount of flexibility and control it offers is on a completely different level compared to most consumer 5G routers, but that power also comes with complexity. This is not the most beginner friendly device. Finally, there are some hardware trade offs. The unit is limited to a single gigabit Ethernet port, so if you were hoping for 2.5 GBE or more LAN options, this isn't the device for you. Overall, the ATL5GR16 is best suited for advanced users who want deep configurability, strong, long range performance in one rugged package. That's it for this review of the Microtic ATL. 5GR16. The summer break is over and the channel is officially back in business. This was just the first part of our look at the ATL 5GR16. In the upcoming videos, we'll take this router into real long distance scenarios to see how it performs 
when pushed to the limits, and we'll also test it against a high-speed base station to find out what kind of throughput this hardware can really deliver. We'll also cover the built-in eSIM functionality in more detail and dive deeper into router OS features to show how much control this device can give you. If you enjoyed this video and want to see those results, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and drop a comment below. There's plenty more 5G testing coming up.